Hey everyone, it's me Vivian and I'm back with another video. Today, I thought that I would film more of a personal video and chat to you about my experiences dealing with imposter syndrome at work and also share some tips on how I best overcome it. So let's first talk about what imposter syndrome is. Now, a lot of you might already be familiar with this term. It's those feelings of inadequacy and incompetence that come despite your success and achievements. Now, these can come in the form of thoughts such as, I'm a fraud, I don't deserve this, I just got lucky, what if I fail? All of those self-doubting thoughts that come into your mind every so often. I feel like imposter syndrome is such a universal topic that almost everyone struggles with at some point in their life, whether it's in their career or in their personal life, but it's so little talked about. For those of you that are new to my channel, I am a data scientist working in Sydney, Australia, and I have been in this field for the last five years. I've personally always considered myself relatively lucky to get to where I am today, and because of this, I find myself constantly battling with an inner voice inside my head that tells me I'm a fraud and I don't deserve to be where I am today and that I only got here because of luck. After years of trying to tell the inner voice to go away, I think I'm finally at a stage where I'm comfortable in my own skin and I've learned to coexist with this voice inside of my head. Now don't get me wrong, I still feel imposter syndrome all the time, I've just gotten much better at dealing with it. Which is why today I want to share some of my stories on my lessons learned, hoping that it can help some of you out there to help deal with imposter syndrome. I really hope that my video today can help at least one of you out there, or just serve as a reminder that you are not alone in this big world of imposter syndrome. Please give this video a thumbs up if you are enjoying my content and also consider subscribing as it really does help my channel grow and I appreciate every single one of you. Now let's get straight into today's video. Often at work I interview data scientists who are just doing way more complex things than I am. Some have way more qualifications, others have years of experience over me, whereas some other people are just so charismatic and so good at communicating. I can't help but compare myself to them and because of that I always find myself thinking that you know I don't deserve my promotion that I fought so hard to get or I'm just not worthy of the salary or this particular role that I'm in. And with that I end up constantly going into this vicious cycle where I'm doubting my own abilities as a data scientist. At work I often train up new starters as well as present my findings back to the team through various lunch and learn sessions. Most of the time I second guess myself and I wonder if I'm really the right person to be giving advice to other people. Even when I have mentoring sessions with some of my mentees, I often wonder why they value my advice so much. After all, I'm just a regular person who happens to have stumbled upon this opportunity to be able to give back. What makes me special? And to top it all off, here I am giving out data science advice on YouTube. How to break into the field, how to interview, all of which are things that I haven't done in two or more years. Why would any of you listen to me? Am I really worthy to be giving out all this advice? These are just some of the doubts that come into my head almost every day. I think my first piece of advice is to know that we are always our own worst critic. It might help to verbalize our concerns and fears to our trusted friends and family, or even to our manager at work, and that way we can see exactly how harsh we are on ourselves. After watching one of Ali Abdul's videos, I came across this thing called the curse of knowledge, which says that once we learn and understand something, we find it hard to imagine ever not knowing it. Suddenly it no longer becomes interesting and surely everyone else must know it. But what we don't realize is that our ideas, which might seem so obvious now, may take other people years to learn. Also, it's just really important to know that nobody is expecting you to be an expert and to know everything. Guiding someone else along the way is more than enough. And to top it all off, it's even harder being in a field that is currently trending as the hottest job of the 21st century. Every day, new algorithms are being invented, faster than anyone could possibly keep up with. There will always be holes in our understanding, and that's just something that we have to manage. Technology moves so fast in the data science world that even the most experienced employees will fall behind if they don't keep up. It's crazy to think how much things have evolved, from SAS and MATLAB being in fashion 10 years ago to so much open source software right now. 
tools like Kubernetes and Jupyter Notebooks never really existed 10 years ago. So just imagine what data science is going to look like in another 10 years time. Realistically, growth and new software will only pick up more as we move towards a world of big data. So know that if you are having a tough time keeping up, chances are everyone else is too. What I've learned to realize is that no company has ever hired a data scientist or software engineer or any other employee for that matter because of what they cannot do. Companies hire people for what they can do. It's just a reality that there is so much to be learned and it is impossible that one person can know everything. Data science isn't about the technical skills, it's about what value that you can provide to your business. If you can derive accurate insights from your data and translate this into a way that your stakeholders understand, then that is adding value to your business. If you can build a decently performing model that is able to make predictions and be deployed, then that is also value adding. That is what you're being hired for. Most data scientists don't touch deep learning, nor do they do clustering on an everyday basis. Not knowing how to do any of these things doesn't mean that you don't deserve to be a data scientist. All that matters is if you can do one thing particularly well. Maybe you have a very critical mindset. Maybe you're very good at stakeholder management, or maybe you're just really good at building and implementing models. That is your value add, and that is what you are being hired for. None of us are imposters. We're just talented in different ways within this vastly complex field. The biggest thing that took me years to realize is that everyone starts off new in any data science role, regardless of your technical skill set, and that is because of domain knowledge, which is the key to succeed in any data science role. No matter how many PhDs or masters you have up your belt, every time you change roles, you're going to have to understand the business, build trust with the stakeholders, know where all the data is and all the platforms that your new company is using. Another thing that my mentees and I often chat about are the data science job postings and requirements. No wonder it's super daunting looking at some of the open roles which are asking for a ridiculous number of skills. Some job postings are asking for proficiency in, I don't know, R, Python, Scala, MATLAB, SQL, AWS, Spark, Tableau, and the list goes on. Just know that nobody comes close to checking off this list or even anywhere near, and most employers don't even expect you to do so. Plenty of people have been hired that only have two or three of the above skills, but what is important is that you have the attitude to want to continue learning. So please don't let an unrealistic laundry list of requirements hold you back from applying for that dream data science position. And one more thing to keep in mind is that everyone starts somewhere. We can't be comparing our failures to the highlight reel of someone else's life through their LinkedIn. So maybe instead of being so negative about this, channel this as a motivating factor to continue learning and upskilling one step at a time. So I hope that this video has helped you out in one way or another, or even so just remind you that you are not alone in this big scary world of imposter syndrome and that all of us feel it, we just don't really talk about it. If you resonate with some of what I spoke about today, feel free to drop a comment in the section below to let me know what are your best tips on dealing with imposter syndrome. I would love to build a community where we can lift each other up and also bounce ideas and learn from each other. I often find that when I'm at my worst, when I share my story with my colleagues or my friends or family, I often feel significantly better because I realize that they're actually going through something very similar to me and at least that I'm not alone in feeling what I feel. I wish you all the best with your fight against imposter syndrome. You've totally got this and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.